Hello from the heartland. My name is Jenna, and this is Smarter News. News when it matters and why it matters. Our Smarter series features unique people who help us think and live smarter. Walk around your household, pick up any number of items, and you'll see the Made in China label. It's just one obvious reason why a trade policy between America and China matters. The relationship between the two largest economies in the world will not only impact just them, but the entire global economy. This week, the U.S. and China signed phase one of a trade agreement. President Trump called it, quote, one of the greatest trade deals ever made, end quote. His critics have a different opinion. One writing in the New York Times, quote, trade wars rarely have victors. They do, however, sometimes have losers, and Donald Trump has definitely turned out to be a loser, end quote. Hmm. Admittedly, the components of this trade deal are complicated, and with such varying degrees of opinions, it would take me an army of fact checkers to figure out what's what in a timely manner. So I did the next best thing and found someone who provides some balanced analysis, acknowledging there's both good and bad in this deal. In fact, our guest doesn't call it a win or a loss. He calls it a truce. I've interviewed China analyst and author Gordon Chang over the years. He's not afraid to call it like he sees it, and he has a unique perspective, having worked and lived in Hong Kong and China for more than two decades. Gordon always has a way of bringing us back to the bigger picture like this. China has made it clear that it, uh, it it's, it's attacking our society across the board. It's attacking our democracy. In May of last year, they actually even declared a quote-unquote people's war on the U.S. And we got to remember that with our commerce, we are enriching China. They're using the proceeds of that commerce to build up their military. And senior Chinese military officers in public gleefully talk about killing Americans. Wait, what? If you're surprised, I was too. We discuss this further, but first we tackle the issue at hand. Why does this trade deal matter? The U.S. and China have many trade disagreements. Uh, what President Trump did was to take some of the easier matters and include them in the phase one deal. And in phase two, they're going to look at some of the tougher ones, the tougher ones being uh, China's subsidies to its state enterprises, its state industrial policies, its new cybersecurity rules. In this first agreement, it is historic for one reason. The U.S. is moving away from free trade. We're going to manage trade. A lot of free traders don't like it, but we got to remember that China's Xi Jinping has been moving China away from a more open system to one where he is determining economic outcomes, and he is moving basically to a command economy. So if you're going to have uh, satisfactory trade relations with China, it's got to be managed trade these days. It's unfortunate, but Trump is just recognizing reality. What would a healthy relationship, an economic relationship between China and the U.S. even look like? It would look like exactly what we do not have now. Fundamentally, China is stealing hundreds of billions of dollars of U.S. intellectual property each year. Some people say it's only $100 billion. Other people put it at $600 billion. But whatever it is, Jenna, it really is unacceptable because this is where the future of America has got to be, which is technological dominance. And China is chipping away at that. And that's just completely unacceptable for us. So... Um, also, the other thing that's, that's occurring, which is still significant, and that is uh, China's predatory trade behavior. It is not following and complying with its trade obligations to the U.S., obligations it freely undertook. And so you put these two trends together, and it means that our trade relations with China are unsatisfactory. What does that mean for the average American consumer? couple things. First of all, in the short term, China does um, is a low-cost producer of consumer items. So Americans do benefit from that when they go to a big box retailer. But uh, many Americans don't have jobs or have jobs which are not as good as the ones that they previously had or the ones that their parents had. So a lot of Americans have been disadvantaged. We have, for instance, a uh, opioid crisis, fentanyl, and it's not just that China is selling the fentanyl. It is that people have done this because they don't have a future. So 
there's the issue there. And then when it comes to the big issues of uh, technology, China is stealing America's future. And people may not feel that today, but they will feel it and their children will feel it. So across the board, China is making life very difficult for Americans. And it's only a very short-term advantage of cheaper goods at a Walmart or whatever um, that is any benefit to them. So when we go back to this phase one of this trade deal, in your mind, what is one of the top positive things that came out of this agreement? Uh, The most important thing uh, is uh, China's commitment to buy $200 billion more of U.S. goods and services over a 2017 baseline. If China actually complies with that, that will have a material effect on, on many American homes. So that's a good thing. Question is, China would have had to buy a lot of uh, U.S. agriculture, deal or no deal. And the reason is that China has a severe food crisis right now, African swine fever affecting um, pig population and the army worm uh, decimating crops. The other thing is that's going to be good on this is there are s- some uh, promises that China has made about intellectual property protection and the like. I tend to think that China's compliance on those is going to be spotty at best, and eventually they're going to dishonor those promises in their entirety. So it looks good on paper, but probably isn't going to really give the relief that American companies need. So what do you think is one of the bad things, if I could categorize that in that way, Gordon? There are um, a couple broader issues that are of concern, and that is even before the deal was signed, the U.S. started reducing tariffs on Chinese goods. These are additional tariffs imposed under the Section 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 as a remedy for the theft of U.S. IP. Those should not have been dropped, but they were a precondition to the deal, the Chinese said. Um, The other thing is that just the mere fact that there was going to be a deal convinced a lot of companies to stop moving their factories off of Chinese soil. Because of the trade friction between Washington and Beijing, a number of companies actually started to take their factories and move them elsewhere, some to the U.S., some around the world, because they couldn't price in the uncertainty. Uh, That process of offshoring out of China has slowed because people are now more confident that the U.S. and China will have enduring trade relations. I think that's over-optimistic, but um, uh, I I think these factories should leave China because ultimately under Xi Jinping, who believes in sort of a command Maoist economy, it's very difficult for us to have good, acceptable trade ties with the Chinese. If we step back even further, China has made it clear that it, it's, it's attacking our society across the board. It's attacking our democracy. In May of last year, they actually even declared a quote-unquote people's war on the U.S. And we got to remember that with our commerce, we are enriching China. They're using the proceeds of that commerce to build up their military. And senior Chinese military officers in public gleefully talk about killing Americans. Really? I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, this is this is stunning. We Americans, we live in a democracy. Our government is legitimate. We don't really care that much about propaganda or symbols. But China, which is in a semi-totalitarian country right now, symbols are very important. Propaganda is very important. And their senior officers are actually talking in extremely belligerent tones just give you one example. In December of 2018, a uh, Chinese rear admiral said he wanted to launch his Dongfang 21D and Dongfang 26 missiles, sink two aircraft carriers, and kill 10,000 Americans. This is a rear admiral speaking in public. This is a guy who has actually in, in the past said things like this and has been promoted and promoted and promoted, and now he's flagged rank. So we've got to understand the hostility in the Chinese system towards Americans, and we got to think about how we are going to defend ourselves as a society from China. I mean, that's a completely different picture than anything I've heard in the news. And that's one of the reasons why I like talking to you too, Gordon, is that you actually pay attention to what's being said inside China, which many of us don't have access to and certainly can't read in, you know, the native language. So there's no way for us to really know what's happening there. And that's one of the questions I have for you as well is domestically, what are the major issues inside China that every American should know about? I mean, the one that you just mentioned is huge. Are there anything else that we should just be aware of that's happening over 
over there that could threaten us economically or even our national security? Well, there, there's so many things, Jenna. I mean, basically, China has taken the view, as Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, speaks as if China is the world's only sovereign state. And that would necessarily mean that the United States is um, a colony of China, as is Europe, as are countries in Latin America. This is a breathtaking view of the world. Um, Xi Jinping knows he can't enforce that view on the world, but this is where the Chinese are driving this. They are challenging our ships and our planes in the global commons. So, for instance, uh, in 2018, they, they blinded two pilots of an American C-130 uh, over the Horn of Africa. And when you try to blind the pilots of a plane, you're trying to bring it down and kill the crew. So we've got to understand that China is not deterred. And as well, at about that same time, they were using these sonic attacks to cause brain injuries to our diplomats at the consulate in Guangzhou. So China doesn't seem to mind harming Americans. And so when you put that together with the hostile statements that are being made, the United States has to understand that, unfortunately, we have, there's a country there that is uh, opposed to us across the board. When you say that, it makes me wonder whether or not this trade deal is a good idea at all. It, you know, and so I'm curious how you still came to the conclusion that at best it is a truce, but that in some cases there are some positive things for America tucked into it. Yeah, it's always short term versus long term. The short term, you know, two hundred billion dollars more of exports to China, of course, is going to be good for Americans. But we got to remember that at the same time that we're bolstering a regime which is unalterably opposed to freedom, democracy, and the United States. So these are things, you know, we, we tried for decades to integrate China into the international system, which is the reason why we have the policies we do. But by now, it's clear that that policy just hasn't worked. And what we have done instead is to strengthen a regime that has become more hostile in recent years and uh, has been very much opposed to not only the United States, but uh, the values that we consider to be absolutely core to our society. Interesting. So final question for you. I was reading, and by the estimates by the Associated Press, there were two-thirds of Chinese goods still have a tariff on them. So this phase one deal does, as we were talking about, does certain things, but we still are in negotiations for phase two. What does that mean for America right now? Are we in a position of strength? Are we in a position of weakness? Do we have leverage that could actually continue to help us with some of the issues that you mapped out? We hold the high cards. Uh, we have a far larger economy than China's. Our economy in reality is probably growing faster than China's. And we do not have a trade dependent economy. China has an economy completely reliant on the U.S. In 2018, which is the last year for which we have numbers, um, China's merchandise trade surplus against the U.S. was 119.3% of its overall merchandise surplus, which shows you that China really needs the U.S. market. President Trump, at the signing ceremony yesterday, talked about something which is absolutely essential, which was keeping tariffs in place, these additional Section 301 tariffs. And that gives China motivation to try to come to a better relationship with us on phase two, as well as to comply with its phase one promises. President Trump has sort of changed the thinking of Americans about how we deal with China. I would like to have seen him get a better deal, but nonetheless, we are on the right path and keeping these tariffs in place is obviously the right thing to do. And that's good that the president uh, did not take off more of those tariffs as many people wanted him to do. Quick, concise, nonpartisan, smarter news, a refuge from the storm. I'm Jenna. Thank you for choosing Smarter. Smarter. 